In this video, we will work out three examples of calculating partial derivatives using the rules of differentiation. Our first example, we have a function of two variables, f of x comma y equals x y squared plus y sine of x y. We'll start by taking the partial derivative of f with respect to x. So we'll need to take the partial derivative of each term separately. So we'll take the partial derivative of x y squared, add that to the partial derivative with respect to x of y sine of x y. So remember, when we take the partial derivative with respect to x, we treat y as a constant. So the y squared in the first term is just a multiplicative constant. So the partial with respect to x is simply y squared. Now, in the second term, again, the y on the outside of the sign is a multiplicative constant. But inside, I have the product xy. So I'm going to have to use the chain rule. So derivative of the outside would just be y cosine of xy. But then I need to take the partial derivative with respect to x of the inside, which is xy. Now again, on the inside, the y is just a multiplicative, multiplicative constant on x. So the derivative or the partial derivative with respect to x is just going to be y. So our partial derivative then is going to be y squared plus y squared cosine of xy. The y squared coming from the original y and then the other factor of y from the chain rule. So that's the partial of f with respect to x. We'd also like to find the partial of f with respect to y. So we go through many of the same steps. We are going to take the partial with respect to y of the first term, xy squared, plus the partial with respect to y of the second term y sine of xy. So with the first term, the x is just a multiplicative constant. So our partial derivative is just 2xy. The second one, I have to use the product rule. So let me make a note of that. So don't forget. So what does that mean? Well, I'd have to take the derivative, partial derivative, of the first function, multiply it times the second function, plus the first function times the partial derivative of the second function. Partial derivative of y with respect to y is just 1. So I just get sine of xy plus y times. Now here I'll need to use, when I take the derivative of sine xy, I'll need to use the chain rule again. So I'll first get a cosine of xy, and I'll need to multiply that times the partial with respect to y of the inside, so the partial with respect to y of xy, and that'll just be x. 
So in the end, I get 2xy plus sine of xy plus xy cosine of xy. So that's our first example. The next example, we'll look at a function of three variables. So we'll need to find the partial of g with respect to x, with respect to y, and with respect to z. All right. Well, I'm going to use the subscript notation to save a little effort here. So I'm going to say the partial of g with respect to x. Again, I'll have to take the partial with respect to x of each term. The first term, partial is just going to be z. Second term, I have a product, so I need to use the product rule. Let me just make a note of that. And let's go ahead and do it. So we would have the partial, the first function, times the second function. Plus the first function times the partial with respect to x of the second function. And the second function, e to the negative x squared minus y squared. So the negative x squared minus y squared, both are in the exponent there. I'll need to use the chain rule with that particular function. So get z plus e raised to the minus x squared minus y squared plus x e to the negative x squared minus y squared. Now apply the chain rule. So I have to take the partial with respect to x of the exponent. So minus x squared minus y squared. But since y squared is a constant here, this will just wind up being a negative 2x. So altogether, I have z plus e to the negative x squared minus y squared, and then minus x squared e, oh sorry, 2x squared, yeah, there's a 2 there, 2x two squared e to the power of negative x squared minus y squared. So that's the partial with respect to x. Now we still need to do the partial with respect to y and the partial with respect to z. So let's go for y. Partial of g with respect to y is going to be the partial with respect to y of the first term. Oops. And if I write that correctly, First term does not have any y in it. It's just partial with respect to y of xz. Well, xz will be a constant when differentiating with respect to y. And then I'll need the partial with respect to y of x e to the negative x squared minus y squared. So now I have an x out in front, but I treat x as a constant here. So I don't need a, a product rule when I'm differentiating with respect to y. So I'll get 0 for the first term. And then I'll have x e to 
to the negative x squared minus y squared, but I still need the chain rule. So I need to multiply that times the partial with respect to y of the exponent negative x squared minus y squared. So after working that out, I'll get what? Minus 2xy e raised to the power of minus x squared minus y squared. So I guess we're left with the uh, partial derivative with respect to z. So I need to take the partial with respect to z of the first term plus the partial with respect to z of the second term. So partial derivative of the first term is just x. And then the second term does not have any z in it at all. So that second term is just a constant and its derivative then is going to be zero. So for our final example, we want to look at a case where we use implicit differentiation. And I am going to have to make just a quick improvement here. Quick correction. Good. All right. So uh, here we have an equation x, y, z equals sine of x, z. And we'd like to be to view z as an implicit function of x and y. So we're going to try to find partial z with respect to x and partial z with respect to y. So I'm going to think back to Calc 1 and how we did partial or implicit differentiation. But we are going to differentiate each side with respect to x. So let me make that correction. So on the left-hand side, I have to view this as product of two functions, x, y, and then multiplied times z. So I'll need to use the product rule. So I'll need to take the derivative of the first function times the second function. plus the first function times the derivative of the second function. The right hand side, I need to use a chain rule. So the derivative of the outside will just be cosine of xz. And then apply the derivative or multiply that by the derivative of the inside. Now the inside is also a product. So when I take the derivative of the x times z, I'm going to have to use the product rule again. So back on the right hand side, um, 
torsion with respect to x of x, y, that's just going to be y. So I'll have y, z plus x, y partial z with respect to x. And that's going to equal cosine x, z. And I'll need to multiply that by the derivative of the inside using the product rule, which I'll write out step by step here. So derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. So let me just copy what I did before carefully. And on the right hand side, I'll have cosine of xz times the quantity z plus x partial z with respect to x. Now, just like in Calc 1, I'm not done yet. I have some algebra to do where I have to solve for partial z with respect to x. So let's go ahead and do that algebra just for completeness. So I want to collect on one side uh, all of the terms that have a partial z with respect to x. So I would have on the left hand side, I have an x, y. On the right hand side, I would have an x cosine of x, z. So I'll subtract that from each side. So now I have minus x cosine of x, z. Then on the right hand side, I'll collect all of the terms that do not have the partial z with respect to x. So I would have a z cosine of xz, and then minus yz. So the only thing that's left is just solving for partial z with respect to x, which would be a quotient I'll have in the denominator, sorry, in the numerator, I'll have z cosine of xz minus yz. And that'll be over x, y minus x cosine of x, z. So that would be partial z with respect to x. So we're just left with finding what is the partial of z with respect to y. So let's take the partial with respect to y of the left-hand side. That will equal the partial with respect to y of the right-hand side. So we still need to use uh, the product rule on the left-hand side. So that would be the partial with respect to y of the first one times the second one plus the partial with respect to y of the second function times the first function. But the right hand side is much simpler because there is no y. So the sine of xz is a constant and so the partial with respect to y is going to be zero. So this is going to give me, what, xz plus xy partial z with respect to y equaling 0. So that would say xy partial z with respect to y equals negative xz or partial z with respect to y 
equals negative z over y. And those are all the examples I wanted to do for this video.